Hello, this is Ben from Curious Turtle, and in this short tutorial, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through how you can use the film wash color effects for After Effects to create a sort of Super 8mm look in After Effects itself. So we've got our main footage here, and I'm going to use a number of our effects here just to, to build on top of each other. This is actually a very, it's always a very successful way of working, I find, to use adjustment layers instead of working directly on the, uh, on the main layer. Uh, it means we can we can start to build things up quite quickly. So I'm going to start with a uh, 60s color one here. And this will just give us our main sort of tint, our main tone here. Uh, and so you can see it's doing a number of a number of different things. Now different sorts of uh, eight mil film react quite differently. So uh, if you really need to match a certain particular type of film stock, then then do a quick search on or YouTube and see if you can find an example of the stock you wish to match. So here what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into my final contrast here and I'm just going to boost the contrast just a little bit. So each of the film wash presets has a, a final contrast here so we can just boost that up a little bit there. Okay, so I'm just going to name this layer 60s color 1 and create another adjustment layer over the top. So this has given us our main, our main sort of tone. Uh, and I'm going to come in, I'm going to use the uh, fashion faded yellow here, just put that over the top there. So you can see this is probably a bit too harsh to go uh, over the top, so let's call this faded, faded yellow. So I think, yeah, this is a bit too harsh the way it's working at 100%, so this is another great way, of, uh, great thing about working with adjustment layers, is we can just come in here, and we can just start to build up another tone over the top. So we see the before and after. quite subtle there so let's just turn that on a bit more there we go so I'll probably take that to about 35 there so I'm gonna add my final film wash here and I'm gonna go for something well, we're gonna try to, to tilt towards the magenta a little bit so let's start with uh, fashion magenta see what that does and again it's a little bit harsh the way it is right at this moment so we're just gonna pull it back so we can see all of our reds here have turned into a lovely sort of orange here and the skin tones have remained the same pretty much. We've given it a bit, bit more contrast there, which I'm actually going to come and take away a bit of that now. So let's remember to name our, name our layers. So this is Fashion Magenta. So what I want to do is I don't want to have such a huge amount of contrast here. One of the uh, sort of giveaways is having our blacks a bit too black. So I'm going to take our output black and take that down. So this is going to start looking a little bit sort of uh, washy now, wishy-washy. So to get away from that, I can now just adjust the gamma back up here a bit more. So, so that sort of uh, created a kind of darker image, but our output black is never going to dip below 25 here. Uh, and in the same way, actually the shadows here I want to tint them a little bit towards the magenta as well. So I'm just going to come into the into the greens and very slightly just boost that up a very small amount. Okay, so we've got the colors sorted out for, for the most part. Um, what I might do actually in the top one, the fashion magenta here, Again, back in the final contrast, just boost those whites and just maybe blow those whites out a little bit there. There we go. Right. So we've got our um, we've got our main color sorted out. So we want to add a few more sort of artifacts that that sort of show us or show the audience that we're watching a uh, an old film. Okay. So let's just create a uh, a new solid, a black solid, and we'll call this Flicker. There we go. Uh, so when you're projecting an old film, an old Super 8 film through an old projector, uh, we're going to get some sort of flicker going on. Um, I'm going to set this to, let's try overlay to begin with. Yeah, that's going to look quite nice. Okay. Should we even try soft light. So what I'm going for here is just to get a fairly subtle sort of flicker going on in here. So see where it goes. We're just we don't want too much, we just want it to sort of move between probably zero and 
maybe around about 25. So instead of doing keyframes for this, I'm going to add a, an expression here. Very, very simple expression. In fact, most of the time when I use expressions, I always go to the, the little library here and just start changing those. So I'm using a random, which is going to give us a random number on every frame. And I'm going to type in, in between the brackets, 0, 25. So that means our lowest number is going to be 0, and our highest number is going to be 25. So we do a quick round preview there. And that's giving us just a, a nice sort of uh, random bit of flicker going on. I quite like that. Okay, so that's our flicker layer. Uh, the next one I'll do is another new solid. And this time I'm going to make sure that it's 50% gray. And this is going to be our noise layer. So we're going to add a bit of film grain in here. Now we've got quite a few different options here with the noise and grain. Uh, we can just use a regular noise, which is fairly quick, um, or we can use the add grain, which is uh, a lot slower to render, but gives a, a generally a nicer sort of result. But just for the sake of speed here, I'm just going to add a regular noise and turn this blend mode to overlay again. So the reason we used a 50% grey is that we get this much nicer sort of noise effect with the overlay, um, the overlay blend mode. And again, because we've got it on a layer above everything else, if it's too harsh, we can just take the opacity down and that will just blend it back in a little bit more. Um, another little technique for noise is just to render out five seconds or so and then just um, bring that back in and, and use that over the top in the same way. Cool, and so the next part is to use my frame. So what I've got here is just a Photoshop layer of a, a Super 8 frame that I've just uh, painted up myself and put that in and set that blend mode to multiply and what this basically does is it crops out all of this and gives me a really nice sort of super 8 style sort of frame there another little thing when you're shooting with super 8 is that the uh, you, is that you generally weren't shooting 24 frames a second so I'm going to come to posterize time here and I'm just going to type in 16 so you see that we're really getting somewhere now. Uh, it might be a bit difficult to see depending on the uh, the frame rate that you're viewing this at now, but, uh, but if you're trying it on your own footage, you can actually see that there is a, uh, a marked difference there. So the last thing I'm going to do in this tutorial is just dirty it up a little bit more. Um, this does require another, uh, another solid layer here, and it does require also another effect. Um, there are several ways of doing this uh, this little thing. Uh, I'm going to do film damage. Uh, there are several plugins you can get for it. Uh, and, and one of the things is just to, to add some dust and scratches uh, on there. I'm not interested in anything of the gain or grain or anything, so just going to add some scratches here. Uh, what you can also do is use a, a bit of bit of stock footage as well, which is relatively uh, easily available, and just uh, and just overlay that over the top. It just sort of dirties it up a little bit. If I really wanted to, I could also add a bit of shake in the uh, in the image there as well, uh, just to, to give it sort of like the uh, to give it an effect that the the sprockets are sort of just slipping a little bit. So there we have it. That's just a super quick way of making a uh, super eight millimeter effect using Curious Turtles Film Wash Color Effects for After Effects, and a few little tricks and techniques uh, here in After Effects itself. So my name's Ben from Curious Turtle, and you can see more tutorials either here on YouTube or come to CuriousTurtle.com for all the information. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.